Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Race. It is December the 21st, first day of winter, which I'm sure it's gonna be freezing cold here in Arizona. Um, got my friends uh, from uh, upstate New York, I'm sure, having a very different experience uh, here today. But uh, we are gonna enjoy the weather here. We're gonna enjoy our Arizona winter, uh, which is what this is all about, right? That's why people live here. It's not for the summers, that's for sure. So. We are on December 21st, which means it's the 21st day of the countdown to Christmas, and uh, we are taking one step forward uh, in our relationship with God, in our knowledge about his word, but not knowledge for knowledge's sake, knowledge to transform. We want to understand God a little bit better each day, grow a little bit more uh, in our relationship with him each day. And today we're on the 21st day of the countdown, uh, which means we are marching closer and closer to the birth of Jesus and how that's not just a... A story, an account that's found just in Matthew and, and Luke, the first couple chapters there, but it's the whole story of Scripture, that it's all pointing to the Savior. And But ironically, now we now we are in Luke and, and Matthew because we're that far along in the account. Uh, but if you missed some of the days, you want to find out how uh, the Christmas stories in Genesis and throughout the whole rest of the Old Testament, check out some of the old uh, old posts in the last, uh, weeks, uh, last few weeks here, and you can uh, catch up on the account. Today we're in day 21. And uh, I don't do this every, but we're reading from a book Adrian and I wrote for our family uh, called Countdown to Christmas, uh, which is a daily family devotional that, that takes us through the Christmas account. Uh, let me read from December 21st. It kicks off in Luke chapter one. It says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent an angel, Gabriel, to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman, the Lord is with you. These few verses in the beginning of the Gospel of Luke begin to quickly bring together thousands of years of expectations and promises. Gabriel continues to reveal to Mary what is about to happen. She will have a child, even though she was a virgin. She, this would not be a child by natural means, but by supernatural ones. God is stepping into human history. All the promises he makes to his people about the coming Messiah would be fulfilled in the birth of this child. For the first time, this child is given a personal name. Through the prophets, many different titles are attached uh, to his arrival. Messiah, Savior, Son of God, Son of Man, Son of the Most High, Emmanuel. But now we are given the name Jesus. Jesus, the Son of God, is coming to earth to rescue mankind from their sins. John the Baptist is preparing the way for his arrival, and now we know who his earthly mother is, a young girl named Mary. But what's so special about Mary? Why did God choose her? The passage simply says that she found favor with God. Now we can assume that this has something to do with her character and devotion to God. These things would obviously be pleasing to God and cause her to find favor with him. More than likely, however, there are other young girls who are devout and obedient. Many times in scripture, when God singles someone out for their character, the point is usually made that God found only this per one person of good character or explicitly states that their character is highly surpassed by that of their peers. I don't necessarily think this is the case here. I believe what makes Mary special and causes God to choose her can be found in her reaction to the news. It's one of simple obedience. Her life is about to get very complicated She's going to have to tell her fiancé that she's pregnant, hoping that he would believe her when she relays the account of the angel's visit. She's also going to have to endure the whispers from her community, as they will likely judge her as her belly begins to grow with child. These are the temporary inconveniences. Still ahead is the pressure of raising a child who is the savior of the world, God in the flesh, the one whom she worships would now be under her care during his vulnerable childhood. What if she makes mistakes? What if she does something wrong? Faith is acting or believing something based on reputation, not facts. Mary has incredible faith in God. She does not know how this will all work out. She doesn't know what steps to take and what obstacles would lay ahead, but she does trust that God is in control. If God trusts her with this task, then she certainly trusts him with the details. Her quick obedience might lead one to believe that she doesn't quite understand the implications of what's happening. But as we continue to read in the Gospel of Luke, we find recorded Mary's song. It's apparent that she does understand. 
It's her beautiful response to all that is happening through her. It's an incredible balance of humility and the significance of what's happening. In Luke 1, starting verse 46, this is her song. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, and henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is doing, uh, for he who is mighty has done great things for me and his holy name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke about our fathers to Abraham and his seed forever. The prophecies are being fulfilled with the arrival of Jesus and a virgin will give birth. He will be born from the line of David. Mary is an unmarried descendant of King David. God's promises are coming true. These promises along with all the others, will be fulfilled in the birth of the life of Jesus. Let's pray. God, we come to you today and we just, uh, just celebrate how you use people full of faith. Now, just a little faith. God, you don't require a lot from us. God, you say faith like a mustard seed. God, to trust you, to rely on you. When things don't seem to make sense, when we don't know all of the next steps or, or all the answers, God, you just ask us to trust in you. So God, help us to do that, not just today, but uh, moving forward. That as we're given faith opportunities, to just take one small step forward, trusting you, relying on your track record. God, you've been so faithful to us. God, we can read uh, through the scriptures your history of faithfulness. But God, if we just sit and ponder, God, we can just think of your faithfulness in our lives, the ways that you've brought us through, been with us, helped us along, given us opportunities. God, our, our, our lives are full of, of your presence and a track record of when we trust you, things go better that way. So God, help us to rely on that. Help us to lean into that this day. In your name I pray, amen. Amen. Hey, I hope you guys have a great, great rest of the day. And I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now on the next Daily Race. Love you guys.